Kit Guru has returned to MSI at CES 2023. Yesterday we were looking at laptops, today we're looking at everything that is not laptops, which in the case of MSI is an awful lot of products. And we're going to start with the PCI Express Gen 5 SSD. We have two similar but different SSDs, Spatium M570 and Spatium M570 Pro. These are both running on the same Fizon controller. I suspect that beneath the surface they're actually reference Fizon SSDs. They have, however, got different operating speeds. The non-pro, 10 gigabytes read and write. The 570 Pro, 12 gigabytes read, 10 gigabytes write. We understand the difference in spec is down to flash memory rather than the controller itself. Perhaps there's also something changed in the firmware, but considering it's a brand new controller, I'm going to say it's down to the flash. And then as we move to the right, we have older SSDs, or rather current SSDs. So Spatium 575 is PCI Express Gen 5, Spatium M480, PCI Express Gen 4, just as it says and we can see that the speed goes down 7 gigabytes read 6.8 write down further 5 and 4.2 and over here a mere 3.6 gigabytes and 2.8 gigabytes and then of course you get to SATA speeds which are a mere drop in the ocean by comparison so PCI Express Gen 5 SSDs are here the question is going to be when can we buy them how much will they cost and here we have a breakdown of the thermal solution to keep the SSD under control. We understand this controller requires cooling for something like 20 watts and considering it's such a tiny little chip that's a significant amount of heat per square millimetre. So the cooler is a serious bit of kit and it is necessary. Mice and keyboards. The Vigor GK71 Sonic has red switches. These are MSI's red switches, not cherry red switches. And indeed it has a certain clattery, clattery kind of feel beneath the finger. I'm not sure I'd mistake that feel for a cherry red switch, but it's certainly in the ballpark and it is a proper mechanical keyboard. And then we move down the line to a whole series of clutch mice. Loads of RGB, you can't see it on camera I imagine, but that's got a textured feel to it. We can take the dongle out of the charger and plug it in the end of the mouse should we feel the need. So proper wireless. For some reason putting it on the stand just feels peculiar. But the RGB is very pleasant. Similar here, textured feel. This is a smaller version. Described to us as perhaps for children or ladies with small hands. But that wasn't me saying it, that was someone I was talking to. And across the bottom, we have lightweight wired mice. The Vigor GK71 Sonic with blue switches. That is actually considerably more clattery, and I could genuinely mistake that for a cherry blue. That's interesting. This is unexpected. MSI has an EV charger. And this is apparently going to be a global product, not just for either the Far East or for America. Knock me down, as they say, with a feather. We asked whether MSI had had to employ extra staff to develop this product, or indeed had bought a new company that already did this product. But no, it turns out MSI had all the skills necessary in-house. And that's what the plug looks like. This is the statutory, obligatory and necessary beauty shot of a table of graphics cards. Naturally we're looking here at RTX 4070 Ti's. The interesting thing here is white. MSI tells us they think there's a market for about 10% of graphics cards to be white rather than the black or gunmetal, so they're going white. They also have other white components so it makes perfect sense. It means you can indeed build an all white PC using their hardware. So moving down the line, the RTX 4070 Ti Gaming X Trio in white and then the RTX 4080 Gaming X Trio in white. And then we move on to the conventional, let's just say, non-white graphics cards. RTX 4070 Ti Supreme X 12 gigabyte and the RTX 4080 16 gigabyte. We're trying to add up between us how many of these graphics cards Dominic has already reviewed. 
and we know the answer is a considerable number. Around the end, we have an AMD graphics card. This is the RX 7900 XT Gaming Trio Classic 24GB. We quizzed the MSI rep closely about coolers on AMD graphics cards. He assures us that this is no problem whatsoever. It may be significant that MSI is using a cooling solution called core pipe, i.e. heat pipes, rather than vapor chamber. Who knows, perhaps the recent news that's centered around questionable cooling on AMD, perhaps it does indeed all come down to certain vapor chambers. And then down this side of the table, we have graphics that are already familiar. RTX 4080s, RTX 4090s, and at the end of the line, the RTX 4090 Supreme Liquid. MSI is launching a range of routers, and they are quite extraordinary. The name of this one almost defeats me, the Radix B22000 Turbo, but it's a Wi-Fi 7 router that has movable antennae. And these antennae, they tell us, move automatically to keep the Wi-Fi signals at maximum power or to give best coverage. This is not like app controlled just for pretty patterns. Wi-Fi 7, we understand, is going to be coming possibly later this year, perhaps early next year. So it's on the way. The spec of Wi-Fi 7 suggests it's essentially a souped-up Wi-Fi 6E and tri-band. And that suggests this Radix AXE 6600, which is a Wi-Fi 6E tri-band router, is fairly similar to that Wi-Fi 7 hardware. The feature that's being pushed here is the quality of service, QoS, i.e. prioritize your game streams to make sure it goes absolutely brilliantly well and no nasty Netflix interference occurs. Interestingly, these routers are the world's first with heat pipes inside. We understand that the cooling system was developed within MSI and when you look at, say, graphics cards, it will come as no shock to you to learn that routers and graphics cards within MSI are in the same corporate division. We were told the heat pipe cooling solution lowers internal temperatures in the router in the order of 40 degrees, which sounds absolutely enormous. You'd think that some other company might have already cottoned onto this as being a good idea. MSI is saying they have a technical lead over the competition with a router that will give you better sustained Wi-Fi traffic. Next to that, the Radix AX6600, which is Wi-Fi 6 rather than 6E, but is still tri-band. And the AX1800 Wi-Fi USB adapter, which means you can plug Wi-Fi 6 into your laptop that does not currently have Wi-Fi 6. The MEG 342C QD OLED monitor, it's a bit of a mouthful of a name. So it's an OLED monitor with a resolution of 3440 by 1400, measures 34 inches on the diagonal, has a refresh rate of 175 hertz, also has an ambient light bar underneath. So the lighting that's along the bottom edge of the screen is reflected on the outside of the frame. 21.9 aspect ratio, the pricing appears to be very low. We're being told it might be 800. If it was a thousand pounds US dollars, that would still be, by the sound of it, very keen pricing. Meg Trident X2 13th for 13th gen. So this is a pre-built PC. Now we are fairly familiar with Trident PCs from MSI. They're small form factor PCs and there are some Tridents on the other side of the table. This is like nothing we've ever seen before. So it's a pre-built PC with a Core i9 13900K and RTX 4090. The graphics card is air-cooled, is inverted. So this vented top panel is where the air is, and that's an intake and the air is drawn in by the graphics card. The processor is liquid cooled. Come around the side, Luke, and you'll see that the side panel looks quite extraordinary. Sadly, MSI doesn't have a stripped down version of this system here, and they say to get inside is actually quite a job of work. Also on the front panel, we have a little LCD that they're very excited about. Do I dare touch? Oh, let's do volume control, that's gotta be easy. Yeah, we go, that's nice and easy. And to revert to the default, whether it's an image you've set or the weather report, whatever, you just leave it, and after a time, it toggles back. Interesting looking computer. Not sure when it's coming to the UK. Certainly do not yet have a price.
Okay then, you might think something's now broken, but in actual fact this 49 inch QD OLED monitor, model code 491C, is not turned on. It is non-functional. Despite that, it has won an award at CES. Actually, it looks like it's won two awards at CES. This is an early prototype, hence non-functional, with an extraordinary resolution of 5120 by 1440 and a refresh rate of 240 hertz. We're told as a result that the preferred connection is HDMI rather than DisplayPort, and they certainly do not have a price this monitor. It does beg the question when it'll actually function, but that's a wholly separate point. And if Luke pops around the back of the monitor, the stand and the design do look quite eye-catching. There's an awful lot of hardware on the back of that very slender panel. Also begs the question whether you have a desk that is large enough to accommodate this enormous piece of hardware. It's time for some motherboards and we're starting with three AMD models that already feel quite aged, which is entirely unfair because they're actually about four months old. So that we're entirely familiar with the new Zen 4 motherboards, but let's move across to some Intel stuff that is slightly less familiar. At CES, Intel has done a really quiet, low-key launch of sub-Z790 chipsets. So here we have B760. And the interesting thing being is that MSI has got one single micro ATX in the form of the Morta Max Wi-Fi. That looks interesting. Mortars have been a firm favorite of the budget PC builder for a long old while. Then we have the Mag B760 Tomahawk Wi-Fi, so that's ATX we believe priced around the 250 mark. Above that, the MPG B760i Edge Mini ITX from MSI. If this was Gigabyte, this would be very little in the way of news. From MSI, this is quite a shocker. Having said that, we are, as always, more interested in the Tomahawk and the Mortar because those are good mainstream products. But the Edge in Mini ITX, definitely of interest. Above that, purely for scale, rather than the banana, we have the enormous Meg Z790 godlike. And then we have a selection of silent gale fans. So here we have three fans just on their own. Then we have three fans on a liquid cooler. Two more fans on a liquid cooled graphics card. It was pointed out that this one fan on the graphics card itself is not a silent gale, but is in fact a Torx 5. There is a single power supply on show, the Meg AI 1300P, which they're saying is PCI Express 5. Now that's true enough in the sense it has the socket and is supplied with a cable for 12 volt high power. But the real point here is this is an ATX3 compliant power supply. And MSI is very keen to point out that not only were they very early to market supporting the new RTX 4090 power requirements, with an ATX3 power supply, but they could actually supply stock to meet demand. We understand the OEM for this power supply is CWT. It's easy to think of MSI as a laptop motherboard graphics card manufacturer, but clearly they make a heck of a sight more products than that. It's only when we visit CES and Computex that we're reminded of the true breadth of their portfolio. Nonetheless, seeing routers and a car charger, did not expect that. We're finished with MSI for CES 2023 and it's on to the next video. But if you haven't, do please give us a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to Kit Guru.